can you subnet a subnet? And can those subnets be different sizes? The answer is yes. You'll be given a network like this, 172.21.42.0, a slash 24 network. And Bernard Hackwell, the CEO of Hackwell Industries, is telling you to address a new factory they have. He needs four networks, a guest, robots, servers, and workers network, each with their own different host requirements. And all you have is a slash 24, get to work, slice it up. How are you gonna do that? Can you even do that? Yes, with a little magic called VLSM or variable length subnet masking. Variable meaning that the networks we're cutting up might be a different size, and in this case they are. Now I do have good news. You no longer suck at subnetting, right? If you've watched this entire series, you're pretty good. And while this is your final challenge and it will be a challenge, you have the skills. So get your coffee ready, get all the skills and knowledge you've learned in the past episodes. We're gonna combine all of that, the power of coffee and subnetting to solve this problem. Let's do this. So let's look at our networks and tackle our problem. Each one of these has different host requirements as we mentioned before, uh, totaling roughly about, I don't know how many, 10? 57, 26, ah, 210 hosts, which is good because uh, the network we were given can only accommodate 253 hosts, world slash 24, remember? So it's possible, but how do we do it? Here's how we do it. I don't know why I have two fingers up, it's kind of weird. We do it the same way we've always done it. VLSM is the same as all the subnetting you've learned. You just have to approach it in a different way. For example, when doing this, you'll want to start with the largest host requirement first. So looking at our stuff here, the largest network we have is the R is the workers with 117 hosts we need. That's our host requirement. Let's subnet. Now again, you've been here before if you've watched our series. We're gonna be subnetting the 172.21.42.0 network slash 24 based on host requirements. So let's call in our friends, we need Nosferatu, of course, to convert our subnet mask from decimal to binary. Help us out, Nosferatu. Thank you. See, it's easy. And we can't forget his brother, Nosferatu. In step one of our subnetting process, he'll help us figure out how many host bits we have to hack. So we'll bring in our Nosferatu chart, which is just double the size of our Nosferatu chart. And we'll start to subnet. 117 hosts, which according to Nosferatu, 2, we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven host bits. We're gonna hack seven host bits. And because we're subnetting based on host requirements, we're gonna go to the upside down and save the host. And right now I'm gonna go very fast because you've already been here before. Now I don't wanna waste your time. So in our current mask, we're gonna save every host but the last one, we're gonna let him get hacked, giving us our new subnet mask, the slash 25. And in data decimal, here's what we look like. And if we throw that last octet onto the Nosferatu chart, we can see our increment is 128. So let's build our network. Again, we've been here before. 172.21.42.0 through 172.21.42.127. And that's the network for our workers. But here's where it might trip you up. You might be like, okay, what next? What do I do? I was tracking with you until now. It's actually not too bad. You just pick up where you left off and you start with the largest next. Like when you're doing VLSM, you go from big to small. Start the largest host requirements to the smallest host requirements. Next on our list, what do we got? We got the robots. Why does he need so many robots? I don't know. We'll ask questions later. What could be the harm? Now, real quick, I do want to thank our series sponsor, Boson Software. They're the reason this thing can be free on YouTube. They're amazing. And they're really amazing at practice exams. Like this question right here. Can you get this right? I doubt it. No, actually, you probably can. You no, you no longer suck at subnetting, at least after the end of this video. Check this out. This is from their CCNA practice exam, which you can take right here in your browser. It's so cool. They give you a subnet and they say, hey, which one of these hosts is valid on that subnet? Here's the question. If you know it, comment below. If you want more of this to actually get ready for the CCNA and take it and pass it and become amazing, <laughs> check it out, link below. I use Boson to pass my exams and they've supported me my entire time being full-time YouTube. They're amazing. Anyways, back to back to subnetting. So we pick up where we left off, where we leave off. Well, we got 172.21.42.128 and we go from there. That's the network address. Let's take it over here to our worksheet and we'll even use the same mask, a slash 25. And again, our robots have a host requirement of 57 hosts. Nosferatu, give us our mask in binary, please. Thank you, Nosferatu. Now I'm gonna speed around this. You're gonna see things moving on my screen right now because you already know how to do this. I just wanna show you how we go through the process how we jump to that next subnet. With our new subnet mask, we've got a slash 26, 255, 255, 255, 192. The increment is 64, which should more than accommodate, <laughs> accommodate our robot overlords. Subnetting. So to build our network, we'll start where we left off. 128 plus 64, we've got 192. 
one. And that is our network for the Robot Overlords. They forced me to say that. 172, 21, 42, 128, slash 26. Now at this point, I hope you're seeing how it's coming together. It's weird, but we're just starting from biggest to smallest, and we're just subnetting each network in order based on the host requirements. Go ahead and do the rest yourself. Do our guest and server networks. Pause the video. Unpause. How'd you do? I think you did great but let's see real quick. Now again, we're just gonna pick up where we left off, which was 192. Now I'm not gonna go through the entire subnetting process again, but you would have started out with this address or this network and this subnet mask with a host requirement of 26 for our servers and just subnet that. And by the end of it, we should have an increment of 32, a slash 27 subnet mask, also known as 255.255.255.224. And if we build that network out, it's gonna be 192 ending in 223, 223. And there's the subnet for our servers, and I'll go ahead and draw on the guest right now. 224 slash 28, ending in 239. Now, if you got that right, that's fantastic. You just did VLSM subnet, which again, is a lot of what we've already learned in the series, because what we did here was just subnet based on host requirements four times. We just kind of had to approach it in a weird way, big to small, and starting where we leave off each network. But honestly, it's kind of crazy when you look at it, right? Like we got slash 28, 26, 27, 25, and we cut that all up from a slash 24. That's impressive if you did that. And really, I'm kind of at the end of what I can teach you. You, I can confidently say, no longer suck at subnetting. Congrats. Now, it doesn't mean you won't forget everything you learned here as soon as you walk away, because that will happen. <laughs> it happens to me, at least. You probably need some practice. For that, check out Network Chuck Academy. I've got a link below. Joining me on that academy, you'll get some extra practice, extra quiz questions that can help you polish up, sharpen these subnetting skills because it is a skill you have to develop over time. And trust me, you're gonna forget this. You'll have to come back and learn it every year or so like I do. Now also learning subnetting is a skill you'll take with you into many of the networking problems you'll have to solve. So for example, uh, our series sponsor, Boson Software. If you jump into their Boson XM, the best practice exam software in the world, you're gonna hit questions that are very, very similar to the CCNA questions that will require you to subnet. And it won't just say, please subnet this. No, it's gonna say like, what's wrong with this network? Why isn't this access list working? I'm telling you, this is a core skill you're gonna bring with you. So if you wanna test yourself, get on Boson XM to see how you how you do. Also, they're Boson NetSim, their network simulator. They're gonna give you labs, building networks right in your browser. Dude, you can be chilling on your couch with your iPad, networking, <sighs> nothing better than that, except you, know, you need a cup of coffee, then you're good. But seriously, check out Boson below. They have made this entire CCNA series possible, including this You Suck at Subnetting series. And I'm sad to say the series is now over, just the subnetting part. There's more CCNA to come, but subnetting, like I said, you've learned all I can teach you. Now go learn it again.